All right, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's study session on Santa Clara County 911 Ambulance Services. We'll call the meeting to order, and uh, why don't we start with a roll call. Jimenez. Torres. Present. Cohen. Here. Ortiz. Present. Davis. Here. Doan. Here. Candelas. Here. Foley. Here. Batra. Present. Kamei. Mahan. Here. Thank you. Great. Thank you. So just before I turn it over to the chief, I, I just want to thank everybody for being here, all my colleagues for making the time for the study session. Uh, Chief Sapien and everyone in the in the box this afternoon. This is a uh, really good moment for us to step back and learn more about emergency medical service operations in our county for the first time in, I believe, over a decade. The um, county's contract with uh, Rural Metro is set to expire, which is an opportunity for us to learn and think a little more about uh, the input we want to give and what kind of service models could look like. And this is for us to get a common understanding of our county EMS system, our 911 ambulance services, how um, service model trends are changing across the state and just really be informed as we think about what service may look like for the next decade or more. So it's, a, it's great timing, really appreciate the chief pulling this together. Thanks to our city manager as well. And with that chief, I'll hand it over to you for the staff presentation. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, Mayor Mahan and members of the City Council uh, and uh, my boss, the City Manager, and our City Attorney. Um, I am Robert Sapien, I'm the Fire Chief, and I wanna thank you, first of all, for allowing time for today's study session, where, again, we will provide an overview of emergency medical operations within Santa Clara County with a focus on 911 ambulance services and possible future service models. Our objective today is to end this session with a common general understanding of our EMS system, including ambulance services, system revenues, and system model trends in the state of California. This scheduled three-hour session will include a presentation covering the agendized topics shown in uh, the slide uh, above, which will take approximately 40 minutes, uh, I think probably less, uh, and the remainder of time will be reserved for comments and questions and answers. With me today uh, are uh, Battalion Chief Patrick Chung, Tim Maybe, Deputy Director Athena Treaty, Deputy Fire Chief Scott Coscarelli, and Administrative Officer Matthew Chaco. The primary presenters today will be Tim Maybe, Battalion Chief Chung, and me. Tim Maybe is a Senior Associate Project Manager with AP Triton. AP Triton was founded in 2014 and has become an industry leader in public safety consulting. The department has engaged AP Triton to assist in assessing and pursuing opportunities for emergency medical services system improvements. Tim brings over 30 years as a paramedic working for both private and public fire service providers, uh, is experienced as a National Fire Academy instructor, and is a project manager on multiple county ambulance provider RFP processes. Battalion Chief Patrick Chung is a 17-year veteran of the San Jose Fire Department. Having served in the ranks of firefighter, fire engineer, and fire captain, he is presently assigned oversight of the Emergency Medical Services Division in the Fire Department. As the County Emergency Medical Services Agency, advanced life support services in Santa Clara County are provided under emergency medical services agreements held between the County of Santa Clara and providers including Rural Metro Incorporated, the exclusive private for-profit provider of 911 advanced life support ambulance services in the county, and agreements with each participating fire department providing advanced life support first responder services within their respective jurisdictions. County agreements were first effective on July 1 of 2011. In fiscal year 2017-2018 operating budget, the department was authorized $150,000 for the department to evaluate emergency medical services delivery models. Funding was rebudgeted year over year as the department monitored the status of the county's provider agreement, which was extended past its original maximum term uh, of June 30, 2022. 
the ambulance provider agreement will sunset after 13 or 16 years in either 2024 or 2027. First responder uh, agreements will expire on June 30th of 2025. With the end of these agreements nearing, the administration seeks to evaluate EMS system reform options and prepare recommendations for system improvements to ensure high quality and sustainable EMS services into the future. Just a note, in case we make uh, mistakes uh, in, in terms of referencing Rural Metro, uh, Rural Metro uh, is now owned by American Medical Response and uh, Global Medical Response, and so you may hear them referred to as Rural Metro, AMR, or GMR. We will try to keep that as simple as possible. Um, I'd also like to note uh, that since 2011, we have seen emergency medical services call demand increase by over 48 percent. Uh, this increase in volume uh, has strained fire department response resources, impacting both resource availability and response time performance. Uh, to put some numbers to that, uh, in 2022-2023, uh, for EMS-only responses, uh, that equates to 67,752 calls, or 62% of calls for service in the city of San Jose. Similar trends have been observed over the last four years. Before we proceed with a focused discussion on emergency medical services, I think it's important that we remind ourselves of the full sco scope of emergency response services that the fire department provides. Our resources, are deployed to meet the all hazards emergency response needs of our city environment. As a secondary answering point, the fire department's communication control room receives and processes 911 caller needs, dispatches appropriate resource, resources, and supports incident commanders during large scale incidents. Field responders are dispatched to any physical emergency that threatens life, property, or in the environment including fires, rescues, hazardous materials, and others. Emergency medical services, on the other hand, are a relative newcomer in the fire service. Limited first aid services provided by fire departments began to give way to newly, newly developed training standards. In 1970, the National Academy of Sciences Subcommittee on Ambulance Service developed guidelines for advanced training program for two levels uh, of training, Emergency Medical Technician 1, or BASIC, and Emergency Medical Technician Paramedic Advanced. In addition to EMT basic skills, EMT paramedics possess a broader range of skills, including invasive interventions such as administering medications and giving injections. Prior to 1995, all San Jose Fire Department first responders were trained as EMT 1s, providing basic life support with responding private ambulance providers staffed with two emergency medical technician paramedics. In 1995, the department began providing first responder advanced life support services, staffing with firefighter paramedics on each fire company, resulting in a more rapid advanced life support intervention service throughout the city. It is important to maintain recognition that while more than 62% of emergency responses are for emergency medical service requests, the department is charged with response to all hazards, some that can become major disasters if not rapidly mitigated. Therefore, all hazards response resourcing must be front of mind as we discuss optimization of emergency medical services. As I stated previously, the department has experienced a 48% increase in call volume since fiscal year 2011-2012. When the rural metro and first responder agreements became effective, this again has stretched operational resources and increased costs of providing ALS services. Those costs can include reduced on-duty training time, increased supplies demand, wear and tear on apparatus, increased risk, and decreased resource availability. I wanted to also take a moment to remind us of what generally occurs over 67,000 times in San Jose 
with a brief description of the EMS workflow. A 911 caller requesting emergency medical services will first be received by a police department 911 call taker. Once the nature of the emergency is understood, the caller will be transferred to the fire department communication center where the caller will be further engaged while resources are dispatched and en route. Additionally, the fire dispatcher will call contact Santa Clara County Communications, usually through a computer-aided dispatch link, who will dispatch the ambulance on a separate channel. The fire department emergency medical dispatcher will give the caller specific instructions on what actions to take to initiate patient care based upon what signs and symptoms are being described. These instructions will continue until first responders arrive on scene. Upon arrival, first responders will initiate care with a firefighter paramedic as the highest medical authority. When the ambulance arrives on scene, patient care will be resumed with a formal transfer of care from the firefighter paramedic to the ambulance paramedic. The patient is loaded into the ambulance and transported to the appropriate emergency room. In exigent circumstances, the firefighter paramedic may retain patient care and ride in the ambulance to the emergency room where care is transferred to a higher medical authority at the hospital. As mentioned, radio communications occur on separate channels and out of separate communication centers for the fire department and responding ambulances. Information is relayed via the San Jose Communications Center and the County Communications Center to and from fire units and ambulances. From a system management perspective, the County Emergency Medical Services Agency notifies fire agencies if ambulances are delayed or unavailable through special dispatch orders. However, no other resource coordination occurs directly between rural metro and fire departments. Santa Clara County spans approximately 1,304 square miles. The greatest concentration of EMS demand is, of course, in the most populous areas. As reflected in this chart from the Santa Clara County Emergency Medical Services Agency 2021 Annual Report, San Jose serves the highest call volume jurisdiction, about 60% of the total for all jurisdictions in that year. Ambulance responses to all areas of the county totaled in 2021 125,918 calls. Uh, of those, 84,293 resulted in ambulance transports. The Palo Alto Fire Department provides its own ambulances servicing Palo Alto and Stanford lands. We'll elaborate on that further in a few slides. I will note that Cal Fire is not listed as a provider. However, Cal Fire provides services under contract for South Santa Clara County Fire Protection District and the City of Morgan Hill, and provides services in state responsibility areas in the county. All of the agencies listed in this chart provide advanced life support services, except for Sunnyvale Department of Public Safety. Fire agencies in the county coordinate automatic aid agreements to allow best position resources to respond across jurisdictional lines. For example, in fiscal year 2022-2023, there were more than 15,000 automatic aid responses between Santa Clara County Fire Department and the San Jose Fire Department. When larger resource intensive incidents occur or in periods of high demand, Fire agencies exercise the local mutual aid system to balance resourcing. Okay, in this slide, we're gonna talk about the exclusive operating area agreement, which is an area listed here in the map where county ambulances provided by rural metro respond throughout the county except areas serviced by the Palo Alto Fire Department. Palo Alto holds the right to provide ambulance services because it was a provider prior to the 1980 enactment of the Emergency Medical Services System and the Pre-Hospital Emergency Medical Care Personnel Act. These are often referred to as 201 rights because they are specified in Health and Safety Code Section 1797.201. 
First responder agencies providing advanced life support may realize some first responder funding, which is contingent upon meeting specific performance requirements, including response time performance. Participating agencies are required to meet an eight minute response time, 95% of the time when responding lights and sirens to receive full funding without late response fines and performance must be maintained above a 90% overall for contract compliance. The county ambulance provider is required to meet a 12 minute response time, 90% of the time when responding lights and sirens. Response time underperformance by either provider results in liquidated damages or fines as outlined in each respective agreement. Over the past four fiscal years, the average cost recovery for providing ALS paramedic services for the San Jose Fire Department through the first responder agreement has been 45%. For example, in fiscal year 22-23, ALS program delivery costs were $6.8 million with a return of $3.1 million, $3 million in first responder funding reimbursement. It's important to note in 2012 through 2016, the fire department performance fell below the 90% standard and the city was declared in material breach of agreement. First responder funding was terminated during that time period. Through implementation of a comprehensive work plan in alignment with the 2016 organizational review, the department was able to rectify response time underperformance by implementing centralized emergency vehicle preemption, otherwise known as CEVP, which is a system that forces traffic light signal changes as an emergency vehicle approaches intersections. This is designed to decrease emergency response times by approximately five to seven seconds per light controlled intersections. We were also able to add fire station 37, three additional rescue medics, and the restoration of responding companies engine 30, engine 34, and engine 35. We are happy to report that the department has met the first responder contractual performance standard now for over 60 consecutive months. The department has deployed ambulances since the late 1990s, where supplemental transport ambulance resources, otherwise known as star cars, were originally established to strengthen service to areas identified as hard to serve. Star car utilization was narrowly scoped and were rarely utilized for transport. However, the department recognized the value of surge capacity that they offered. Presently, first responder agencies may opt to provide ambulances as allowed by agreement. Annex A of the first responder agreement between the county and the city of San Jose authorizes the department to provide emergency ambulance transport services still on a limited basis to augment the services provided by rural metro. These circumstances were originally, one, when, light, when immediate life-saving transportation was required, two, during material failure of the contracted ambulance provider, and three, during any delay of the contracted ambulance provider. The department deploys three rescue medics staffed with a single fire engineer and firefighter paramedic, equipped to provide routine emergency medical response and ambulance transport. Over the last three years, the department has experienced a noticeable increase in rescue medic usage in place of unavailable or delayed county contract ambulances, which has impacted de department operations and response times. In fiscal year 2020-2021, San Jose Fire Department rescue medics conducted 10 transports. The next year, 105. In fiscal year 22-23, 855 transports. In this fiscal year to date, for 23-24, which covers approximately three and a half months, department rescue medics have conducted 541 ambulance transports. If this trend continues, we'll be on track for performing over 1,700 rescue medic transports this year in lieu of delayed or unavailable contract ambulances. Last month alone in September, the department was tasked with performing 175 rescue medic transports.
In early 2018, the county released a request for proposal towards selection of its next ambulance provider to begin in July of 2019. That, solici excuse me, that solicitation did not yield a new provider. Subsequently, the county began convening stakeholders in preparation for another solicitation. That effort stalled somewhat as COVID-19 became the top priority. In late 2021, the stakeholder process was refreshed and, a formalized, uh, and formalized, including consultant assistance uh, for stakeholder group process facilitation and the delivery of final reports. The following is a quote from the uh, executive summary of that report. The Santa Clara County Emergency Medical Services is nearing the end of its current contract with Global Medical Response, or GMR, for the provision of emergency paramedic ambulance services within its exclusive operating area. The EMS agency has recognized this moment as an opportunity to assess the county's current model for the provision of emergency ambulance services and to identify action-oriented solutions that will improve the system to best serve people within the county. Again, that is a quote uh, from the executive summary uh, of the stakeholder final report. Uh, stakeholder representatives included uh, representatives from Santa Clara 911 Communications, Santa Clara County Emergency Medical Services, Santa Clara County Procurement, Office of the Chief Executive Officer, City Managers, Area Hospitals, Law Enforcement, Fire Departments, and the South County Region. A second consultant provided financial resource, research and analysis of structural costs associated with the provisions of emergency ambulance services in the county. After gathering general ambulance services background information, the Santa Clara County EMS stakeholder group narrowed its focus on four EMS system models that could possibly work in Santa Clara County, including the model currently in place. One, private. A for-profit company is awarded a service area through a competitive procurement process. Again, that is the system currently in place. Two, the alliance model. Here, a fire district or fire department is the provider of record, subcontracting with a private ambulance company. Three, a public third service. This is a new standalone public agency dedicated to emergency ambulance services. Four, fire department transport. In this model, fire departments provide first responder services and 911 ambulance transport services. Following general learning sessions that included some written materials and subject matter expert presentations, stakeholders provided general opinions about each of these models. From the final 2022 report, stakeholders had the most feedback to give on the model currently in use in Santa Clara County. This model, which is currently run by Global Medical Response, is generally perceived as working well operationally, but many stakeholders shared modifications which could help it work better. <clears throat> Under benefits, the group concluded, the main strength of this model is cost. Out of all the models shown, it was the most cost efficient, especially when accounting for scaling and other models to Santa Clara County. It additionally was noted that current model generally runs well in compliance to overall response time standards, as well as that it is efficient in obtaining supplies and resources, possibly due to the access that it has as a large corporation. Some stakeholders noted that their interactions with staff of GMR were fairly positive and that staff overall were professional. Additionally, the fact that the financials show this model to be fiscally solvent implied the stakeholders that was operationally solvent. Concerns, these included that modifications suggested by stakeholders referred to long response times in South County, a lack of transparency in dispatch costs, issues with staffing transparency, and understaffing and management. 
many stakeholders raised raised concerns about disparities in response times and service to southern parts of the county due to poor distribution of resources. A number of stakeholders raised concerns about whether the full costs are actually reflected in the numbers which were shown to the group, especially regarding dispatch costs. Since dispatch is currently run by county communications, personnel are employees of the county. Though GMR does currently pay a flat annual fee towards these costs, stakeholders question whether this fee actually covers the entire expense of the program or whether some of the costs are shifted to the public agency. Other concerns with this model included a lack of transparency around staffing and transitions, especially in management roles, leading to county employees having to handle staffing transitioning as well as a perception that GMR deploys minimal resources in order to maximize profits. The Alliance model, such as the one existent currently in Contra Costa County, forms an alliance between fire departments, fire districts, and a private ambulance services provider. This model was fairly well received by stakeholders, mostly based on its similarity to the current system, as well as the perceived strengths of a public-private partnership. Under benefits, the group noted the main strength of this model is its ability to access the advantages of both public and private system, leveraging the purchasing power of a private firm while also accessing funding only available to public entities. This model is perceived to be fiscally solvent. Other strengths of this type of model include increased resources, clear and streamlined chain of command, and better performance. Concerns uh, noted included uh, it appears as though it would cost almost twice as much as the current system if scaled to Santa Clara County's area. Additionally, there is complexity in how calls currently come into dispatch in Santa Clara County, and it was unclear to stakeholders if this could be addressed in the Alliance model. Lastly, it was noted the number of fire departments in Santa Clara County could pose a challenge to unifying and organizing a jo joint powers authority which would be necessary for the system to operate. We'll discuss this further in upcoming slides. Assembly Bill 389 approves the Alliance model of emergency ambulance services delivery by authorizing counties to contract with fire agencies that will provide emergency ambulance services, in whole or in part, through written subcontracts with private providers. <coughs> AB 389 obligates county boards of supervisors to adopt new policies for all emergency ambulance service contracts entered or renewed by the county on or after January 1, 2022. It also obligates fire agency governing bodies to adopt new policies if they want to contract with counties to provide emergency ambulance services through an alliance model on or after January 1, 2022. It mandates certain requirements for county emergency ambulance service contracts, as well as fire agencies and potential private ambulance service subcontractors, subcontractors operating in an alliance model. It specifies that AB 389's new requirements are within the exclusive jurisdiction of the counties, boards of supervisors, and fire agency governing bodies. The public third service model, based on the model currently used in Austin, Texas and Boston, Massachusetts, creates a third public service for emergency medical services, in addition to law enforcement and fire departments. Benefits included, this model appealed to stakeholders due to its employment of public servants, which can lend more sustainable employment opportunities to personnel. Additionally, the contract includes other services such as community health paramedicine and tailored crisis response vehicles. These are popular services among many stakeholders and many noted the benefits these could offer in Santa Clara County. Concerns. The cost of this model, when scaled to Santa Clara County, would be the most, almost double the current private system and is subsidized by the county's general fund, which is not feasible. In addition to operational costs of this model, stakeholders noted that creating a new third public service would create significant upfront expenses 
and that it doesn't leverage resource, resources which already exist, such as fire department equipment and personnel. These additional expenses further preclude this model from being realistic for Santa Clara County. Finally, the fire department run model, based on the system in the city and county of San Francisco, puts the county fire department in charge of all EMS transport in the county. The benefits of this model included unity of command, utilization of existing assets, dynamic deployment systems, and eligibility for other funding due to the provider being a governmental organization. Many stakeholders noted the benefits of a dynamic deployment system such as that employed in San Francisco, especially when it comes to equitable service delivery throughout an area. Additional strengths noted by stakeholders were in relation to staffing, most notably around career pathways for EMTs and paramedics due to the public system and the integration of fire and EMT services. Concerns. Most stakeholders noted that this system seems to run well, but that many factors make it not applicable for Santa Clara County. San Francisco is very unique in that it is a city and county uh, in one, and therefore has different political structure from Santa Clara County, which has 15 cities within the county area. Additionally, San Francisco has no rural areas, and therefore does not have to contend with the same issues around equitability of service. Most importantly, stakeholders noted that a tax subsidy, such as that which funds a large portion of the EMS transport in San Francisco, is not feasible in Santa Clara County. Again, the conclusions I just provided were from the entire stakeholder group uh, based upon presentations that they heard from subject matter experts and written materials that they reviewed. Okay, I'm gonna take a moment to talk about some of the EMS trends that we're currently seeing. Uh, COVID-19 stalled the training and development of new paramedics throughout the state. The effects of this impacted both public and private employers, mostly fire departments and ambulance providers, including the San Jose Fire Department, where extraordinary strategies are being employed to stabilize paramedic staffing. County ambulance paramedic staffing shortages have persisted, resulting in severely diminished advanced life support ambulance availability evidenced by frequent activations of standard dispatch orders, otherwise known as SDOs. When contract ambulance levels are low, the Santa Clara County EMS agency will activate standard dispatch orders to meet service demand and ensure stability of the EMS system. SDOs 10 and 11 place all available ambulances in service, including fire department rescue medics, to provide emergency transport services within the exclusive operating area. There is a correction here on this slide. The department has experienced a 19-fold increase in SDO 10 and 11 activations on a monthly average in the past three fiscal years. SDO 17 suspends the actual dispatch of an ambulance to any type of emergency until the fire department first responders arrive on scene to provide treatment and to verify that the patient needs emergency transport. This activation occurs when there are no available county contract ambulances. In fiscal year 2020, 2021, there were zero occurrences of this happening. Last month in September, there were 35 cumulative hours of SDO activations meaning on average every day for approximately one hour, there were no available county contract ambulances. This chart tracks over a two and a half year period, the cumulative monthly SDO activation minutes using the red line. As you recall from the last slide, SDOs are activated when there are low levels of available rural metro ambulances. Let's look specifically at June of 2022, where we'll see a noticeable jump in SDO activation minutes that continue to trend upwards, meaning more and more occasions of unavailable ambulances. This directly correlates with the taller and taller blue bars as you move along the X axis, which represent fire department late responses to medical emergencies. 
This correlation in increasing SDO activations and increasing fire department late responses is attributed to the following factors. An increased frequency of delayed contract ambulance response times obviously delays patient transport to definitive care at emergency departments, which is our primary concern. But it also has an impact to our fire department response times as we sit on scene longer waiting for a transport ambulance. During that time when the fire, when the engine or truck company is sitting on scene with the patient, they are unavailable to respond to the next medical emergency that may come into their first due district. We're also seeing an increased deployment of county BLS ambulances without a paramedic on board. This results in an increased need for fire department paramedics to escort that contract ambulance as the primary patient treater. When the fire department paramedic is riding in on that ambulance providing patient care, they leave their assigned engine or truck company as a BLS unit, not able to provide paramedic level services to the next medical emergency. We're also seeing an increased dependency on fire department rescue medic transports. As stated in the previous slide, we've seen a 19-fold increase in SDO 10 and 11 activations and the fire department is conducting more and more rescue medic transports each month. The impact here is that those rescue medics that are transporting patients cannot respond to those routine medical emergencies that they normally would be available for. Keep in mind, each tra patient transport uh, to a destination hospital can take up to 30 minutes, often longer. All these factors have resulted in increased fire department late responses to medical emergencies. Good afternoon, uh, Mayor, Vice Mayor, uh, City uh, Manager, Chief, thank you. Uh, my portion, I want to talk a little bit about system sustainability and revenue. And, and that's part of the, what you're going to hear, uh, patient billing, if you will. And keep in mind, all patient care billing across the nation is, is through uh, the Center for Medi-Cal Medicare Services, or what we call CMS. And so their process of how they want billing done, how you do the billing, those types of things are all directed out of Baltimore where CMS is, is located. What you have is an example bill of, of what we would call an itemized billing. And there's multiple ways of, of, of doing this. But what I really want to have you focus on is what our cost centers are. And really, when you start looking at your payer mix and what is uh, a, a sustainable revenue or a sustainable EMS system, your payer mix really comes into play. And what we have here is, is pretty standard type of payer mix that, that we would see. You can see the collection rate that you would have that corresponds with it. And we're going to talk a little bit about some recent uh, legislation that really dictates some change when it's dealing with the Medi-Cal or, or Medicaid as the federal government calls it. One of the critical things about an EMS system is really having sustainability. And that is, what is the rate structure? How is that billing done? Those types of things. And in a lot of questions that we get from elected officials is, how does it affect my constituents? And if my constituents don't have insurance, what does that look like? How does that process come into play? And, and you, as, as elected officials, really own that. And, and what that is is what we call compassionate billing. And it's not uncommon for fire service agencies to have that compassionate billing process, giving authorization to the fire chief or designee to work through the billing process, not sending people to collections, but setting up a payment schedule and a payment plan. So that is very customary for the fire service because that's the direction from the elected officials. And that's one of the true concerns that elected officials have when we start talking about really patient care billing because it gets very personal at that, that level. And when we're looking at healthcare in general, the cost shifting 
of these cost centers, you will see that a majority of any system across the country, specifically California, the commercially insured patients bear the largest responsibility for pay. That is a, a standard, whether you're in a hospital, uh, clinic, or, or in this case, a pre-hospital delivery. One of the other issues you have to take a look at, and it's been mentioned by, by both chiefs here, is when you look at your system, what is the delivery? And, and a lot of times, fire agencies up and down the state have a, a service area that is not a, a good payer mix, but it falls back to local government. And you heard Chief Chung talk about, we're not having enough units, we have no units at, at some period of times, and where does it fall back to? Where's that stop gap? That happens to be right now, San Jose City Fire Department, for your area of responsibility. So when we look at the EOA, there are those areas that are difficult to serve. And so you have to take those factors into play and set your base rate, your billing structure, those types of things. Because it, you don't have a level of service on who can pay for it or not. It's a system designed to, de -level, to deliver the level of service to the need. And what does that look like? And, and we can go into a little bit more detail, and the chief will, on some recent legislation that allows us alternative destinations. Uh, you might hear the term a sober center, uh, which is very active in, in Los Angeles City right now. So again, when we look at sustainability, right now everything is designed on a fee for service. And that fee for service comes with transportation of, of the patient or delivering that patient care, if, if you will. One of the big factors, and, and we can talk about this, and, and the chief will talk about it a little bit more, is a program that's been around since the 60s. It's a, what they call an intergovernmental transfer, an IGT. Hospitals have been doing it, like I said, since the 60s. What we have in California, it's called Public Provider Ground Emergency Transport, or PPGMT. And, and I apologize, in EMS, I just threw out another acronym. We, we love our acronyms. We don't like to spell it out, so I apologize for that. But basically what it allows, if you look at your current rate structure for what we call a Medi-Cal patient, and right now a Medi-Cal patient represents roughly 23% of the, the payer mix, there's an increased funding from the federal government in a block grants that is solely designed for public providers. And so as the chief talked about the alliance model, the reason it's really so effective and, and there's such a interest for it is it's designed around the accountability first of the elected officials to give authorization, in this case to the fire department, the fire chief, but it brings additional funding. And so the, the chief has had the foresight to, to ask myself and some other colleagues at AP Triton to do a deep dive in what is really the sustainability and the value of your system countywide. And what that then allows you, and as we bring this information back to you, it allows you to see the bigger picture where San Jose is say 70% of the system, it's not unforeseeable to see that taking and assisting the rest of the EOA is just a natural transition for implementing some type of program. But you can see right across the board in this slide that there's guaranteed funding. And that changes a whole lot of how patient care billing is done, how we can determine the uh, sustainability and then what the rate structure of a patient bill would, would look at. And when we look at the state of California, your fire chief is, is right on cue to start asking these questions. And what I mean by that is uh, we've had recently numerous counties go through the, the question process that, that your county is going through right now. 
How do we want to provide patient care transportation? Do we want a traditional rigid contract that just deals with performance issues? Or do you want something that the electeds who are responsible for it can give direction to the fire chiefs and say this is where the areas of improvement need to be. We need these things adapted. And so when we look at that, what we're seeing right now is that trend of fire service agencies being asked or asking county board of supervisors to start implementing a different type of system. Perfect example is Contra Costa County. Uh, they've been in this alliance model since uh, late 2014. Um, they're going out to bid. We're in that process right now, and it's been a very effective, efficient system, not only for the patients involved, but the providers and that continuity of care across the entire spectrum for Contra Costa County, which is a very diverse county, much like what we have here. The only way the alliance model works is you have to have, in this case, public provider, fire department be responsible for it because that's how the funding mechanism is set. So when you start looking at your system evaluation and if you have just a private provider, a commercial ambulance company, they're not eligible for the additional funding. That's money that's left on the table. Um, San Bernardino, it's somewhere north of $30 million. The fire chiefs have told County Board of Supervisors those revenues are getting reinvested back into the system. Managed uh, health, community paramedicine, uh, psychiatric intervention, all those things come into play. And we can discuss some more legislation that allows the public service agencies to be that alternative destination provider, the triage center, all those things where people call 911 where today we can assist them, the chief can build that system for you and you have the full control over it. One of the things to kind of look at and, and it's been mentioned in a couple of memos and even in the county report, uh, a first responder fee. A lot of uh, elected officials have gone to their fire chief and said, we do EMS, the only portion of reimbursement we can get from paramedics on engine companies is a first responder fee. And what does that look like? And how does that billing look? What is that expectation? And what does that additional funding bring in? And how do we reinvest it back? And so we do that all over the, the country. Uh, we do it through the, uh, throughout uh, uh, California. And when you look at the first responder fee, it's just a small portion of funding. But really, the first responder is the communication center, the responding engine companies, and the last component that has all the revenue attached is the transportation. And so really, even in your system today, with, with the minus of, of communication where we can't talk to each other, your San Jose Fire Department's doing 90 95% of everything, the EMD, all those things. Probably even more so, as you heard Chief Chung talk about, your rescue ambulances that are required to be put in because the level of service you're not getting. And so that's the control factor you have right now, but it's not a long-term uh, uh, solution by, by any means from that standpoint. Chief. Thank you, Tim. The current agreement with Rural Metro Incorporated will expire, as I stated before, June 30, 2024, or the county may elect to extend to June 30, 2027. We know by the county ordinance passed on March 14th of 2023 that the county seeks to select, again, an exclusive provider for pre-hospital emergency services and mandatory provisions of their next solicitation, which include consideration of the incumbent workforce, compensation parity and staffing parity, minimum qualifications for providers, in other words, service history, consistency of service levels across the county, financial solvency, diverse community 
outreach or excuse me diverse and equitable community outreach equity access cost effectiveness efficiency and timely response performance expectations and penalties use and reimbursement of county communications and finally a written plan of how the provider will work, work effectively with first responder agencies how the provider will make improvements to the paramedic workforce development and maintain paramedic staffing levels how the provider will address develop and implement family focused workforce policies based upon these established per parameters and trends observed across the state as the opportunity for EMS system reform in this county approaches, the department is focused on identifying strategies for improving EMS delivery throughout the county, ensuring that services are sustainable, and that there is operational integration with our all hazards network of resources. The department will be evaluating options for the city to drive positive change, including evaluation of the described fire department and alliance models in order to bring forward recommendations to the council. In the immediate short term, the department will continue to engage the County Emergency Medical Services Agency towards identifying methods to stabilize current 911 ambulance system challenges. If ambulance shortages persist, the department may need to deploy additional ambulances to ensure services are available to our residents. I will pause here for questions thank you great thank you chief Safian thanks uh, to battalion chief Chung uh, Tim appreciate your presentation and uh, everybody else in the box from our department thank you this was very informative uh, appreciate that we've started this conversation now at the council level I'm going to turn to my colleagues and maybe to kick us off I'll just ask if, if we were to go with the alliance model if that were to be the direction we took is that something that requires county approval to do? And, and then I maybe want to follow up on cost, but go ahead. For the first question, the county would proceed with its normal procurement process, releasing a request for proposal. Uh, we noticed the county uh, via information memoranda a, a while back um, signaling that we're evaluating the Alliance model. Currently, the city of San Jose has its own RFP in the field uh, seeking willing partners uh, for that purpose. Uh, in, in that case, what we would do is we would see if we could come to uh, some agreement to, to form that partnership and prepare for a county RFP release. Got it. So we would apply through the RFP process with a partner right. as part of the alliance model. And the city of San Jose would be the countywide provider of record uh, in that arrangement. Countywide. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then just on cost, and then I'll turn. I saw a few colleagues' hands went up, so I'm going to relinquish the mic. But just as a follow-up on cost, if, if just to play that out to the next step, if, if we were to be awarded and to take that path, what, what high level, can you give us a sense of what the... Uh, transition costs, startup costs might be that the city would be looking at in that model, or is that mostly borne by the by the partner agency that we that we'd be partnered with in the alliance model? I'll, I'll give this and a I try. I don't mean agency, but yep. the the, pri the the private the company yeah. if we're aligned. Uh, I'll give this a try, and, and maybe Tim can uh, can reinforce uh, my response. So one of the advantages early on that I learned about the alliance model is is one of the advantages to that public private partnership is that the major capital outlay is executed by the private provider. Right. And so just like if the county had contracted directly with that provider, they would be responsible for standing up that business model and all of its infrastructure. In this case, that, that would be the same arrangement, and so the costs up front wouldn't really be the cities to bear, um, but the arrangement with that provider would, would have... Um, scheduled out what their unit hour cost would be so that they could support that model. Yeah, it's kind of baked into the model. Yeah. But yeah, versus a pure public play on our part, which would be very significant startup cost. That would be 100% of the would cost. Be, would be we'd own it all. Yeah. We'd be buying yeah. all the equipment. Okay, yeah. got it. If, uh, if I could yes, please. just for a second, uh, the chief is spot on with his response. Your, your question for would it be the county giving authorization, an example being San Diego County LEMSA 
has given authorization to the city of San Diego to go out and do their own RFP. Um, their system is failing to an extent that their belief at the county level is if the city of San Diego can just fix themselves, we'll survive on our own. <laughs> so, so that's a different type of, of aspect. In San Bernardino's case, um, it was a JPA that is in the RFP process, 13 agencies. Um, the subcontractor was bringing 50 million in capital and a, a line of credit through the JPA for 20 million. But again, it's also probably the second largest ambulance contract in the nation. So the numbers would be comparable because there's a, a startup period before you get uh, patient billing collections, those things. But historically what happens is it would be uh, either within, say, the department's budget, city's budget, and or negotiations per your direction from the subcontractor on what capital they're bringing into the process. Got it, that's helpful, thank you. Okay, I'm gonna to turn to colleagues here and we'll kick off with Councilmember Ortiz. Thank you, Mayor. Um, first, I wanna express my gratitude to uh, the department, uh, of course, Fire Chief Sapien uh, and his team for producing a comprehensive uh, report on ambulance services, including its operation and potential future service models for us to um, understand uh, and review uh, here in the county. Uh, I'd also like to thank um, our fire staff, of course our, our medics, um, who have been working diligently during frequent critically low emergency ambulance levels and responding with their own um, fire medics. Um, by supplementing these services, they provide the much needed emergency care our residents need during what often could be one of the worst day or worst events of that individual's life. Um, with that being said, I just have a few questions. Um, first, as we prepare for the county to release an RFP, we are assessing the feasibility of different models, which we've discussed today. If the fire department were to, for instance, take over transport, not saying we are, but if we were, um, there would be a need to retain paramedic uh, to retain more paramedic supervisor positions, um, Med 30, essentially, which is currently set to be terminated at the end of this year. Has the staff considered the potential consequences of eliminating this position and how it may impact bringing these new positions back in the future should we move towards a fire transport model? Thank you, Council Member. Uh, yes, I think what we're, what we're um, contemplating uh, if we were to shift to a new model is that part of that assessment would include all of the overhead required to maintain the system. And so it may very well be that perhaps we recommend three med 30s to support that system, right? That, that, that may be what kind of overhead we need on a, on a shift basis to mm -hmm. provide supervision. Uh, the, the county's request for proposal may actually require more available supervision countywide, oh. and so there might be multiple supervisory positions required. Um, that would be a new reality altogether based upon whatever system uh, evolves. Um, so I think the, the, the question is, is a little bit separate for me in terms of if, if business continues, um, as is today, that was the condition under which the proposal for adding uh, Battalion 35 and phasing out Med 30 was, was um, mm -hmm. submitted. In a new reality, we may need far more overhead. Hey, exactly, yeah, and I understand that that decision with Med 30 was done way before this conversation was started here at this dais. But does it make sense maybe to freeze that decision um, to see, to wait to see what happens? I think what I'll offer is that I am charged with coming back to council, and I think you're gonna help me know what to do okay. next. <laughs> All right, thank you, fair enough. Uh, the, the memo mentions that last year the department completed over 700 rescue medic transports. First off, that's amazing. Thank you so much for your work. Um, are we, and I know we talked about this a little bit, um, are we fully recovering the costs of these trans transports at this moment? 
Currently, the answer is no. Uh, you may recall uh, earlier this year, uh, the fire department proposed in uh, its new fees and charges, um, the inclusion of ambulance transport rates. And so we're in the process of adopting those rates and beginning, uh, if, if the demand continues for transport, we will begin to phase in billing for transport. Well, thank you. Is there is it poss is there a possibility, right? I know that a lot of times we're stepping in and taking the place of uh, a county staff member. Is it possible to reclaim any of that those dollars from the county? Right now, our transports are technically within the parameters of the agreement that we have with the council. As you mm -hmm. recall, Chief Chung said okay. that if the county ambulance service is unable to provide ambulance that we would be uh, providing what ambulances we okay. have. So really there's not, it, it's a very new circumstance that we're in and we're transporting far more than we ever have. However, by the letter of the agreement, we're transporting uh, under the parameters of the, of the current agreement. Thank you. So it sounds like we're in the, we're in the process of exploring billing options that are uh, available on the table. Um, with, when, when we do finally make headway on this, will that come before the council before moving forward or what would that look like? I think the only piece that may come before the council okay. uh, if we choose uh, to go with a third party billing firm, the approval of that contract would come before council. However, the fees and charges are already approved. Okay. And then hopefully if we do start collecting these funds, they could pay for these medics that we would need to hire. So hopefully we could. Um, move forward on that. And then, and then my third question, the memo also highlights that last year there's been 800 instances where fire medics have been required to maintain ALS patient care by riding in the rural metro ambulances. When the, uh, when the county ambulance sends a basic life support ambulance and the fire medic must retain care and ride into the, to the, um, into the hospital, I think you, you, you already mentioned this a little bit, but is there, is there no other way for us to, the county would be the only one to find, and you're saying that, Bill, but there would be no other way for us to collect the um, funds uh, expressed during this? Thank you for that question. I, I think you're now in an area that is not contained in the agreement. In other words, I don't think even the agreement between oh, okay. the county and the ambulance provider really provides basic life support ambulances, and so that's kind of a, a, maybe a, an area that wasn't intended to occur. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We are maintaining, <coughs> excuse me, maintaining advanced life support care for the patient because it's the right thing to do, and, and we'll, mm -hmm. of course, keep doing that. We have not, um, while we have had a conversation with, with, with GMR, the provider, about possible remedies for this situation. We haven't really um, gotten to any, anything conclusive. Um, I, I think the, the most important strategy is to shore up the ambulance system um, and figure out how we can rebalance the, the burden uh, of services, right? So without enough ambulances, the fire department is assuming a lot of new burden for providing these services. We need to okay. figure out to, a way to rebalance it. And how are they billed for a situation like this, given it's the county and, I mean, well, given it's the city providing the services? We do, we do not have a billing structure for okay. the, the paramedic write-ins. All, all right. Yeah. Um, well, well, thank you. I hope um, we could continue to work on this and move towards a place where we're billing and being reimbursed for these, reimbursed for these services, because I know that you know, these roles are expensive. We need more firefighters. We need more medics. And um, I appreciate the study session and the discussion. Thank you, Councilmember. Thanks, Councilmember. Appreciate those thoughtful questions. Councilmember Dwan. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> Thank you, Chief. Thank you to the Fire Department for doing an incredible job with the amount of uh, personnel that you have. And I know we've been studying this model for, for a long while now. Now, I would ask, well, this alliance model is that what we're looking at, right? Meaning the fire department pair of the existing um, emergency medical service company that's already have equipment and have personnel. 
So therefore, it would not impact too much into the fire department if you do the alliance model. Thank you, council member. We're not prepared at this point to make a recommendation. However, based upon trends we're seeing across the state uh, in terms of evolution of EMS systems and the parameters that the county set forth earlier in the year for how they intend to proceed with their RFP process, there really are only a couple of models left. One is the Alliance model and the second is the fire department model. Right now, as we, as we make our initial look, um, the Alliance model looks very promising, but I, I again, not, not quite prepared to, to make a recommendation. Without the Alliance model, how many more personnel, how many ambulance would be approximate needs um, in order to accomplish the goal that we are to cover the call volume that we have? Uh, Council member, we're likely um, going to be able to provide that level of detail when our analysis is complete. Uh, if we are contemplating providing 24 seven services throughout the county on whatever the county says are the performance requirements, we'll need all of that information before we can say what kind of resourcing will be available. And then we'll have to get very granular in terms of understanding things like uh, peak operating times and, and when call volume is high, hospital uh, turnaround performance, all that. There's a lot of uh, information that we have to mash before we can, we can determine resourcing levels. Thank you. Would, would this alliance model would definitely improve the services for our residents? I think I'm going to let um, Tim answer. He has a lot of experience with, with how EMS systems are evolving around the state and, and what the outcomes are. Thank you, Chief. So the question is, is a very good question, and, and so how do we define it, right? And, and so when you look at EMS systems up and down the state, they're unique to themselves. And, and so you were asking the chief a question, if the fire department was gonna take it on, what's it entail? Hiring new people, buying the ambulances, all those things. The city of Santa Barbara County Fire Department in fact did that. that, that was their option. So they are spinning up as we speak to implement their system uh, beginning next year. It's all back to how the RFP is structured, the direction you give the fire chief. But an example I wanna give, when you look at the Alliance model, for example, in San Bernardino County, out of those 13 agencies, six fire departments are gonna provide their own firefighter paramedic ambulances into the system. And for various reasons, difficult to uh, cover, um, they want to participate in that process. They want that vehicle, that mechanism that can do the focus recruitment specific to that agency to, to have a hiring process. So all of those types of things can be built into the model that we would then present to the county for, for their evaluation. So as the chief said, as we kind of work this through on what your system evaluation is, you can see other chief officers here and, and what is the ability for peak activity units um, to have additional organizations say we want to participate at what level, those types of things. That all has to be flushed out. Short answer is yes. There's so much flexibility built into the system that that's the inherent increase to customer service that we can provide. Because again, direction of the elected officials, if we wanna focus on alternative destination, if we wanna focus on mental health, that can be a driver for what our system looks like and the components in that system. Thank you. Will there be a cost saving for the residents by, by having the combination of the Alliance model so because the fire department is the first on scene, now you have a fire department run ambulance on scene as well with the <clears throat> reduced amount of time of response 
and cost saving to the, the residents? So, so not knowing the system completely, because we, we haven't got into the entirety of it. To have a sustainable system, we have to figure out what the payer mix is, what that volume is. And, and so I'll, I'll use Contra Costa County as an example. Through their EMD process, their emergency medical dispatch process, they brought, in this case, AMR into their communication center, so they have one-on-one -on -one communication. They're able to triage a BLS unit and no engine companies go. They're able to tier those responses. So there's some economies of scale there, potentially reducing the need for first responder units on, on select number of calls. I don't know relative, is it gonna be cheaper? That, that is that big question, because so much of this system is on your payer mix. And like I said, there's, there's funding from uh, Medi-Cal, but the other large component is, is gonna be your commercial insurance, because your uninsured patients that haven't been put through the process to assist them to uh, enroll into Medicare and Medi-Cal, respectively, that's a question I, I, I just can't answer or even say yes, of course it'll be reduced costs. I, I, I just don't know on that, sir. Thank you. Chief, I, I believe that you've done some collaborative work with other fire department within our county uh, to look at this system as well. Thank you, council member. Uh, yes, I, I have the, the pleasure of meeting monthly with the County Fire Chiefs Association um, a, as a member, uh, and we have agendized this topic over many months. Uh, in fact, I, I think we had a, a formal presentation by uh, uh, AP Triton uh, a couple years back um, to discuss the, the potential future. Uh, as I noted in the, in the presentation, we've had a couple of stuttered starts because the county's has extended the agreement with Rural Metro, and so knowing when exactly to dig in and, and get to work has been a bit of a challenge, but yes, we have been in communication. Well, thank you for doing that. My last question is that, uh, for example, we got 800 transport. If you time it by $3,500 uh, $3, per transport, it's come to around $2.8 million. How much of that fund will get to the fire department in order to support something like Med 30 or uh, station improvement and some other services? I, I think if, you're, if your question is, um, if we realized the revenues for transports that have already occurred, where could those funds go? I, I think I might have to defer to uh, Jennifer on the flow because I think those are general fund revenues unless it, there's something specific um, that, that would be direction on where those funds would go. All right, thank you, Chief. I, um, I'm looking forward to, to seeing our, our fire department future um, to continue to grow and, and to support our department to, to be one of the best uh, in the country. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Cohen. Uh, yeah, thank you, and thank you for the detailed presentation. I, I want to back up a little bit because I don't, I don't have a strong understanding of, of this current system and how it works. The county is responsible for a contract with a provider, um, and that, are, is there, are there outlay of county funds to the provider, or is it all supposed to be paid by um, reimbursement from insurance and Medicare and Medi-Cal for um, patients who are transported? Is it all cost for service recovery or is there some public fund outlay to, to pay for it? So in, in the, the purest concept of the current model, the reason private providers bid for the work is because of the, the revenue streams that are realized from the transports. And so theoretically, there should be no outlay from the, the state emergency medical services agency or the county. It should be self-sustaining. So they're paying, they're billing for service like a medical, any other medical provider bills for service. 
the contract is just to make sure that the area is covered um, by some service so that everybody has a service available to them. Is that correct? Right. The RFP uh, specifies a scope, and in that scope they say um, you will provide um, sufficient ambulances to cover uh, the area within these response time parameters, and, and right then it, then it gets um, processed that way. So we're seeing now that there's more and more calls that are uncovered. <laughs> by that service. Is there some obligation in the contract for the provider to provide that service? And what are the supposed to be the penalties and ramifications if they aren't able to provide the service? Because when we're stepping up, we're filling in for somebody who's supposed to be providing that service. Right, I guess the example I would give is, is the city of San Jose, when, we, uh, when our performance dipped below the 90% Eight, eight minutes, 90% of the time, we were declared in breach of contract, and that particular um, trigger for breach of contract is specified in the agreement. Uh, I know that uh, that type of language also exists in the, the private provider agreement with the county. So I'm kind of having trouble wrapping my hand around the data that I saw, because it shows that we're making more and more, we're having to respond more and more calls every year, which means they're falling further behind. But isn't there some annual adjustment or, or conversation that's had about here's where you're falling short and you and, and, and you, a company as a private um, uh, provider are supposed to be adjusting, hiring more people, getting enough equipment so that you keep up with the growing demand. Is, is that not happening? What, what's, where's the, the disconnect? Yeah, I, I think there's limitations to how much I can say happens between the county and the provider. Um, I, I will say that we know that the agreement that began in 2011 has been amended eight different times, um, none of which have resulted in more resources that I'm aware of, um, but, but different uh, parameters for response time performance, um, reductions in penalties, those types of things have been changed. Uh, Chief, if I could. Um, Excellent question. Um, as the chief was outlining some of the models and, and why you're really looking or he's looking to bring you solutions that ultimately could be solutions for your peers, County Board of Supervisors, right? Historically, what happens is a, a EOA, an uh, exclusive operating area, which your county is, we have a contract and that contract, let's say, is good for five years. And in that contract, I am obligated for X number of ambulances. If the call volume goes up, I provide you X number of ambulances. I get penalized for that. But then what happens, who's, who's going to answer the call? Well, in case of your fire department, they're stepping up to answer it. So the short part to your question is no. These are rigid contracts that have so many unit hours assigned to them or that they have so many units allocated and then that's where it sets. So you're back to a point with your current contract that's been amended and, and I just flipped to it, page 13 of 39, section 4.9, a minimum deployment there shall uh, be, shall ensure no less than three ambulances, ALS, are available for response at all times in the county. Well, you've heard from Chief Chung that doesn't happen. So, so there's a penalty associated to it, but that's a business decision, right? And, and so I'm not saying it's right or wrong. It's just that's how structured when you have these types of processes in place. It, it takes, I won't say common sense out of it, but it kind of takes that common sense where if it's identified by the electorates, that this isn't making sense. And if it didn't make sense to you with your fire department, you would direct it to the fire chief to fix, which Chief Chung talked about that and measures have been put in place. So, so that's what we're seeing in the state of California that cities, county board of supervisors are saying, we're responsible. Let me then give that authorization to somebody that can effectively manage, and in this case, do I need to level of service, increase the number of unit hours, those types of things. So the contract is written without anticipation and growth of, of need, 
Is that that's kind of what you're saying? It was written with some fixed amount without and, anticipating. In the contract you're dealing with, the answer is absolutely yes. And, and maybe and and they don't go back and say we need an addendum or an increase in the contract going forward in order to start to re to serve the growing demand in the county. So so to that question, and, and Chief Chung might be able to answer that a little bit better specifically. Historically, system-wide throughout the state of California, the answer is no, because I have a contract in place. What affects it then are the penalties I pay. And those penalties could be cheaper than me putting an additional unit in service. Right, right. But, but Chief Chung could uh, get a little bit more into the detail with, with how they're doing it here with the amendments, the process, those types of well, things. Well, let me include a follow-up question too. Yes, so sir. when we as a city, and this is probably for Chief Chung, when we, as a follow-up, I mean, when we as a city are doing this, the transport instead of the county ambulance provider, there's no, the, the patient has no obligation and their insurance doesn't pay anything? Those are free transports? Well, currently right now, uh, as Chief Sapien alluded to, we've set up the path to go and charge for transports under the fees and services, but we have not secured a vendor as of yet. It's currently in process, and it's in alignment with the current partnership RFP that's out uh, from the, on behalf of the city of San Jose. Um, as for the amendments for the county ambulance provider, most of the amendments have actually lowered the performance standard, um, as, as mentioned. Our performance standard to clear all liquidated damages uh, would be 95% uh, for an eight-minute response time. Uh, for the county ambulance provider, that's been reduced from 95 to 92 So when they, when they fall short, rather than try to contract for more service, they're loosening the requirements so that they're not falling short anymore. Um, and I guess that's what I'm understanding from you. Um, so it sounds like, you know, there's a lot of solutions to this, but one is that we need to make sure that the county understands that there needs to be a contract that covers the demand and the potential growth in demand. I was surprised but to see the shape of that curve of how many calls we've had and how the increase has been over 10 years. In San Jose, it looks like it's about a 40% increase in calls for emergency medical service in 12 years or 11 years. <clears throat> Is there, do we have an idea as to why that's happening? That's a great question. Um, we were presented in the annual report to the Public Safety Finance Strategic Support Committee, I think back in April of this year. Um, but we're attributing a lot of that to um, an increased demand for EMS services based upon a growing and aging community here in Santa Clara County, specifically in San Jose. Do we uh, think, do we think that the, I'm sorry, I'm rushing because I want to try to keep it in my 10 minutes. <laughs> um, do we think that uh, this is being, is happening in all the cities in our county equally or is there something different about San Jose? Do we have, have we seen their data to see that suggests that this is a countywide problem? I think uh, the, the county EMS report actually does uh, indicate that they have an increasing uh, increase in demand of 911 services across the board. So that would probably encompass most participating first responder agencies within the county. Okay. And then my question about the alliance model. So my, my, when I first saw what you're talking about with the alliance model, I, th I was kind of expecting that you would um, that we would be getting buy-in from the county that an alliance model makes sense and we would all work together and multiple agencies would be part of an alliance model. But then you were, I heard you say something about San Jose Fire Department might be just commit an RFP for an alliance model, which of course would then have to win a competitive bidding process as opposed to un having a mutual understanding in the county that that's the model we want. How would that, what is the right approach going forward? Yes, under the, the current guidance that the Board of Supervisors has given to staff, the county would release an RFP, and if we proceeded with the alliance model, we would be just another bidder, right, ultimately um, trying to win, win that contract. But wouldn't we want to have maybe other cities like Sunnyvale and Santa Clara and others who have the same predicament and be part of our alliance going in in that bid as opposed to having San Jose be the agency of responsibility? So the, the, the challenge and, and why the, the, the options get narrowed is because the county has signaled that they're going to award an exclusive agreement, meaning one provider. So this is not a conversation the county is willing to entertain at this point. They have a process that they're going to follow and we don't have much influence on trying to, to affect that process. Well, I, I will just say that there's an ordinance in place with, with those specifications on what they've directed staff to do. I, I think they probably have it within their control to 
change direction, but I, I don't. Right. All right. <laughs> I, my time's up, but I'll, I'll see if I need to come back. And, and to further that answer, if I may, um, the chief can talk about Assembly Bill 389 that allows the county to contract with an ambulance <coughs> subcontractor <coughs> through the fire department. So again, that's that part is, is you work through with the fire chief, those are those options that very well could be. You have a JPA that goes and, and have a county board of supervisors go, okay, we can save money. We don't have to go through this RFP process. We don't have to extend it out. We can go through what is called the permitting process or a contract. And that's uh, exactly what happened to the uh, Santa Barbara County Fire Department. Their board of supervisors allowed three permits to the fire department to contract for service uh, with the county. Thanks. And, uh Jennifer, did you want to chime in? Yeah, I did want to chime in. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just in light of the conversation and a couple of the council member questions, um, you know, this is just the beginning of the conversation. We have a lot, uh, and again, grounding everybody about the system, service model trends, and what have you. Um, from my perspective as city manager, we have a lot more work to, and to do a much deeper dive on the financial um, and other system risks that we would have to do for the city before we recommend that we that we get into this business. So we have a lot of work to do because I know you, there's some been some questions from you, Councilmember Dwan, and you as well, uh, Councilmember Cohen. So I um, just want to rest assured that we have still a lot of work to do to make, understand if this makes sense for us, and we would need to bring that back to you. Yeah, certainly a lot of analysis still to go. Um, okay, let's go to Vice Mayor Kamei. Thank you. Um, I just want to say thank you. Uh, this has been accumulating and accumulating and accumulating and something must be done about transport. It is not working. And I tell you, you know, uh, back in 2011, it was rural metro, right? But I know that AMR also bid for that and they didn't get it. They had it previously. And when they bought them out in 2015, I don't know, maybe something happened, but transport has been an issue and increasingly getting worse. So thank you for bringing this opportunity forward and uh, informing us as to how we can proceed. And I wanna recognize that the firefighters really are going above and beyond maintaining life support care. You know, they want to ensure that our San Jose residents are gonna get the care they need, even though we have to eat it. I mean, let's, let's, let's just be honest, right? Uh, we may or may not get reimbursed, but we're willing to do the work, step it up, and you know, do the right thing. So I recognize that, you know, uh, Chief, when you said sustainable, integrated, and stabilize the current situation, I'm so delighted because I think that something must be done. I, um, I, I, I really think that this whole issue of, of how uh, those ambulance services um, happen. I think that each and every one of us can talk to our colleagues on the Board of Supervisors and inform them if they're not yet informed as to how we could do this together for our community. I think that there are better solutions. I'm delighted. I don't know which one is the best, but I'm sure that as you start looking at costs, you look at what's, what, what's possible, um, you know, how we would have to either ramp up or do whatever it is, uh, work with others uh, in the fire district or what have you. Um, I'm willing to do something different because right now it's not working very well. And to have a firefighter uh, have to go with uh, um, and, and leave, you know, their, their, their main job uh, to, to, to be the, the person who's providing these uh, life support care is, you know, they could be in the emergency room for who knows how long, right? And then they gotta get back to where they need to go, get back to. Um, I just think that that's not okay. So um, I guess I am in agreement that something needs to be done. I don't know all the details, but I'm glad that we're at least entertaining the opportunities. And of course, you're always gonna have these trade-offs. But, um, uh, you know, we're not the only ones experiencing this, as been mentioned. 
other cities are also experiencing this, other areas, um, and um, it's not okay. Um, so um, any support that's needed, I look forward to more information and, um, and you know, if there is a need to reach out to our friends in the, in the county, I think, you know, Jennifer speaking to the, to the county exec is what I would recommend and, and have a conversation. What are we gonna do in Santa Clara County? Because it's not good for anyone. I mean, I hear people who are in the hospitals complaining, right? Or, you know, bringing them from one, one hospital to the other. It's horrible. It's really bad. And, and I'm also concerned that uh, there's a monopoly. And, you know, I know AMR has bought throughout California, many other um, transport uh, ambulance services. So I worry about that as well. So I look forward to your bringing it back with uh, more of the details. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Great, thank you, Vice Mayor. Going to Councilor Torres. Great, uh, thank you so much for your presentation and uh, thank you so much to our firefighters for for always stepping it up, even when we have issues with with staff and other external issues that we may have, right? And so, <clears throat> I do also. I want to thank uh, Councilmember Cohen and Councilmember Ortiz because a lot of the questions they ask, I also had. So cuts down a lot of the questions that that I don't want to repeat. Um, but uh, and I know that uh, I know that you're still having ongoing conversations, Chief, about what, what you're gonna bring before us. Uh, and so I took, a, I took a tour with our Med 30 for folks, Med 30, sorry, y'all, I have my retainers today, I forgot to take them off. Um, I had, uh, I had a, a, a drive-through with our Med 30 folks, and so I know how important their work is, and so you know, any, any, anything to support our Med 30, fo our Med 30 folks as an elected official, I, I, I definitely want to do that because they, um, they have real important work, right? And so, and what I saw, unfortunately, was, was, was very, very sad, right? It was a lot of medical calls, not fire calls, a lot of, a lot of medical calls. Uh, and so, and the question I do have, since a lot of my colleagues already asked their question or shared their concerns, the question I do have is, is we are making sure that we're working with our bargaining unit, our bargaining unit right? Uh, when it comes to this, we're making sure we're having conversations with, with local 230, right, before we decide? Uh, yes, thank you, Council Member. A uh, couple of processes there. One is direct communication with me and, and uh, President Tuttle but also uh, we have uh, a, a committee process as we proceed with um, development uh, of our recommendations that will include uh, invitations to Local 230 to, uh, to participate in those committees. Great, and then uh, this is, so is this gonna go to PISFIS before it comes back to the full council or we're we just gonna continue to do this via the full council? Maybe that's a question for the city manager or our attorney, not sure. We'll go to Lee Wilcox. Oh, Lee, there you go, hey Lee. Sure. <laughs> so I would be working with the chair of the PISFIS committee, but as the chief and I have talked about, um, depending on the timing, I think this would probably go to PISFIS for a deeper dive on some of the analysis that Jennifer had outlined once, if not twice, um, before coming back to the full council. Great, great, uh, totally looking forward to, to asking questions and sharing my concerns at uh, PISFIS, so since I sit on PISFIS, so uh, thanks again to our, our fire department and, and our uh, local 230 folks who are here today, so I appreciate it. Thanks, Council Member. Council Member Batra? Chief, thank you very much for that detailed report, especially I like that the final report of October 2022 where you gave in detail the merits on uh, the demerits of each model. And I heard that you made the comment based on what the county's requirements are that leaves only two models uh, of engagement models to sustain, which is the Alliance model and the fire department model. 
Then I read the detailed part of the report about the fire department one, which is only uh, the example given is from San Francisco. And it basically says that this model is great, but it does not work for Santa Clara County uh, because of the uh, it not being a San Francisco being a county and a city at the same time, but Santa Clara being 25 cities. So this model, at least that report makes you read that as if that model is not applicable to us. Could you comment on that one? That is it applicable or some modification of it is applicable to us? Yes, thank you, council member. One of the limitations of the stakeholder group is we were, we were a broad representation of, of many uh, sectors. And so I think we achieved a, a, a fairly basic understanding of the models and, and didn't always delve into uh, either nuances or alternatives for each model. And uh, <laughs> I think that the conclusion uh, about the all fire department model is frankly very complicated because um, it, it can challenge sustainability. Remember the county's interest is in ambulance coverage throughout the county. And if each agency provides transport within their agency, that becomes a, 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 a very different set of payer mixes, meaning some agencies may say break even. Um, my understanding is Palo Alto would be a good example of a system like that. Um, and then others may operate at a serious loss because their payer mix is substantially different. And so I, I think I wouldn't take that particular feedback from the stakeholder group as, as um, completely thorough analysis, and I wouldn't rule out a fire department model, but I will say executing it w would be substantially more complex than uh, the Alliance model. Okay, so, so there are possibilities that that could be some of the objections which have been stated from San Francisco use case can be addressed to make that model really work in Santa Clara County and not be excluded uh, the way the report shows there. Is that correct? Yes, and I think at the core would be the question of sustainability. Uh, operationally, I think our fire departments could do a fantastic job in providing those services, but the question of, of fiscal sustainability, I think, would be the core. Okay, we, and the last thing, uh, what I, you made a comment about uh, when uh, Council Member uh, Korn was asking you, you said we will be a vendor or we will be competing. Um, could you explain that one? Uh, I thought we were all together looking for some service provider, whether that's a fire, mar a fire department model or the Alliance model. And if you can expand on that comment, that would be helpful. Yes, and it, it is, I think, a little bit complicated because the county did convene a stakeholder group, and I think they did so in good faith, to evaluate multiple models to do something similar that we're doing here, which is to inform policymakers on, on what is possible. Um, out of that, the county, I believe, put together their ordinance that specified how they want to proceed. Uh, and my comments to, to uh, Council Member Cohen uh, are, are basically under the constraints of what the county's ordinance says, which is they intend to award uh, to a, an exclusive provider, meaning one provider to cover the whole county, which really narrows uh, what options we have available if we're going to be a participant. And then under that model, we would be a single bidder, just like any other company that might bid for that work. Okay, so so then we will be, San Jose will be operating the whole operation and will be rendering services to all of the cities in the county, is that right? Right, and, and our model would look very similar to the one that exists today, except that we would have contract oversight with the private provider. Okay. Thank you. So you will be bringing back at some point in time with your further evaluation, a lot for you to consider, and then you will be bringing back with your recommendations of which way to proceed further? 
Yes, we have a, a scope of work uh, outlined for AP Triton and they will be assisting us in that process. Okay, thank you Chief and thank you the fire department keeping our city properties and people safe. Thank Great, thanks council member. Uh, let's go to Councilor Foley. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chief, and thank you for the presentation. It's uh, the comparisons of the alliance model, how it's how uh, service is handled today versus a proposal or the what you're taking a look at is really interesting and, uh, and very helpful and I think uh, will eventually result in better service for the people who need the, the service. But I just had a point of clarification. You said a couple of times, and I just wanted to clarify, that the county is looking for one, um, an exclusive provider. But that could not be a joint powers agreement? So it couldn't be a, a, an alliance of all of the cities where a joint powers agreement is created and maybe there's a lead organization like us. I, I think that's a great question. I'm gonna to try to answer and then maybe Nora can rescue me. Um, I think the answer is yes. If a JPA were assembled and if they bid as a single provider to meet the scope of the county's RFP, I think, I think they could be um, a, a viable bidder. Nora, do you want to take a shot at that too? Thank you. I, um, I suppose the JPA could be bidding, but I would imagine if there was a JPA that it would be in coordination with the county and and just uh, set up and, and then operate not in a bidding situation, but um, as a cooperative JPA for the entire county. Chief, if I, if I could. So your, your question of a JPA um, is, is right on cue for when you're looking at these processes. As the council member said, are, are they looking for one service? And you've heard the chief say exclusive operating area. You've heard Chief Chung refer to the health and safety code and, and there's certain requirements and then the RFP is gonna have certain requirements. So in San Bernardino, it's actually their communication center their JPA, they don't own a fire engine, they, they don't own an ambulance, but that structure is what put it in place. And so that's what bid on their system. So as legal counsel was talking, that can definitely work. To the next question then is, if you get that cooperative JPA and, and you have other allied agencies involved, there is state statute under AB uh, 389 that would allow the county to then just contract, as legal counsel said, to that JPA. And just like any other JPA consortium, whether it's training, communication, it would have its elected bodies, your representation, that whole process. The fire service does the JPAs very well. So again, it kind of goes back to the other council member that said, what's that communication to the County Board of Supervisors in that process, right? And, and so where the Chief's coming from, willing to take on the responsibility, but he has the authorization. And that authorization comes from you. And, and your expectations delivered back through the fire service, either through the San Jose City Fire, a JPA, however it works. The other example I want to give you is Alameda County Fires in this process right now. One of the things that they're going to do is instead of a JPA, they're going to have MOUs with all their cities. And then some cities uh, are going to want to do transportation, others are going to want to do ALS engine company coverage, those types of things. So again, yes is always a harder to get to, but as, as the chief has had dialogue with staff and myself, yes is what we're looking at. And, and that yes is how much information can we get you before you just go, okay, enough with the acronyms. Can you actually use the words? But also then direction to be given to the fire chief and what those expectations look like. 
because I, I, I will tell you, um, in these processes, not always does the best provider win. There, there are, you may or may not know this, but there are politics at, at a lot of levels. I, I don't want to break the news to you. I, I know, it's a shocker. So, so one has to, to really understand that, that you can have a very sustainable, comprehensive, innovative system that the chief knows can deliver, but then there can be a hiccup. There can be that politics. And, and so your answer is yes to, to your questions. Now it's kind of that direction. We get you more information. You, you have that conversation potentially with uh, the county exec. Is there interest in saving money and speeding up this process? I would encourage us to look at the JPA because that the joint powers agreement opportunity because that or option because that could work uh, based on what you've just indicated and it might be faster more efficient and uh, spread out the resource or allow the resources to be utilized in the county in a more efficient effective way getting TS is really important getting TS means that we're able to medically take care of those in need quicker and more efficiently and that's what our ultimate goal is and and you're correct because really we have a couple set of patients right we we have the the critically ill patient the time sensitive on both spectrums right. the newborn to to the elderly the other is those high volume users that the system is let down the mental health patients uh, the hospitals that are seeing what should be a clinic patient, but because we don't have alternative destinations, where do we go? We go to the hospital for three hours and, and sit. So, so part of that yes answer are all those things that the fire chief has to bring into his proposal to the county. So it's just not, hey, we can get there 95% of the time within eight minutes. It's getting the right patient, the right resources at the right time and then getting them to the right destination. That's why yes is, is such a difficulty. It, it's a big deal. Thank you very much. Very interesting. I look forward to future studies and future information and then implementing something. I'm sure Councilmember Foley was shocked to hear there could be politics involved. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, we're back around to Councilmember Cohn. All right, thank you. Um, all right, there's so many, so much more, I think, to, to dive into this. You know, the, the difference, we, we provide for police service, we provide fire service, but we don't, we pay as a city for those services that the residents receive without paying reimbursement. The difference in this case is that this is supposed to be a cost neutral model reimbursed by whatever medical uh, system that the patients belong to, right? Whether it's an insurance company or anything else. Um, so there's a little bit more complexity to this. We have, you'd have to have a billing system in place when you do a service. You have to be able to, to get reimbursements from insurance companies. This isn't just about providing, we know we could very well provide this service if it were something that we paid for, but we don't, we're not going to be doing that. Um, so I just want to ask a follow-up question. Alameda County, you said, is, is talking about doing this now. Are, are they, when they do this kind of, whether it's a JPA or some um, MOUs with cities, is there a central billing process to, right. to, to so, handle this so that everybody gets the right reimbursement for the service? Correct. And, and so you heard the, the chief touch on that and, and, and Chief Chung as well. We're going through the process of getting our national provider identification, MPI, and again, it's all through Medicare, Medicare services. That's that process. Once we have that, then okay, let's find a billing vendor and, and we're off and running in that arena. What the, tree, what the chief is explaining to you, whether it's a JPA or the city of San Jose itself, he is the point of contact. And, and so that means all aspects go through him, billing, otherwise, et cetera. To, to that question then is, what is the sustainability and what is that billing process? And so that's where and I'll use uh, uh, San Bernardino, for example. There are a couple of cities that are going to be paid a uh, contractually hourly rate for their medic units. 
it might cover 80% of the firefighter paramedics that are gonna be assigned to it. The sell to the city manager was, for 20%, I'm getting a whole person and additional staffing. Plus, we're delivering a higher level of service. So what is that cost ratio, right? And you talked about, we don't make a profit. No, state statute says we don't. Where that sits is it goes back to that reinvestment. And what does that reinvestment look like? Is that more unit hours? Is that grabbing more uh, alternative destination? Is it getting an enhanced interrogation and advice nurse line? That's the reinvestment that a public model can make happen because of the process and state statute, if that, if that answered your question. Yes, I, I, I just want to make sure everyone keeps in mind that in the model you're discussing where San Jose would be a bidder with a private contractor that implements a lot of these things, that our, we would be responsible when we bid for it to serve the entire county. I want to make sure everyone understands that too. We would be bidding and we would be serving all residents of the entire county, not just San Jose residents. So that's where the, I'm getting a little nervous about the conversation. Um, JPA makes sense, but not necessarily San Jose being having that, that expanded scope. So, so again, we, we talked about sustainability, right? At, at no point from um, a consultant standpoint, and there can be, and, and Chief and I had this discussion this morning, there's a go, no go. There could be something in the county RFP that he brings back to you folks that says, this, this is not viable for these reasons, right? By that same token, the sustainability of the system takes the system in totality. So we can then figure out these, and, and you've got it in here, these uh, 4.7 hard to serve uh, area waypoints that are supposed to be uh, uh, identified every year and then action taken. I'm not sure that's happening. But that then goes back to some of our allied agencies that can cover those areas because the last thing your chief is gonna to recommend to you folks is a system that is not sustainable because it's gotta be revenue based and that's off of the transportation fees, right? right? And so then comes into the play of, of the accountability that you would have as elected officials as you pass it as you do today for the fire chief to handle everything in the fire department that's where the authority lies it strikes me as a conflict of interest for the san jose fire department to then be held responsible for another area where we have to make sure we're not preferentially treating our residents but yet everyone else in the county is relying on us to be serving everyone anyway just a and, and, weird, and, weird thing in my mind about right. the single agency doing it and, and to that point, sir, those questions are asked by numerous city council members that are then being served, right? And so we, that dialogue with San Bernardino County and those multiple cities, because again, it's, it's their JPA communication center that doesn't own a fire engine, is, is the contract agency. Right. And so as we bring you back more options, that deeper dive, Again, we're not gonna carve out an area. Historically, it's done in these RFPs. That's why an example being San Barbara County Fire has three transport units in, in the middle of nowhere because economically it wasn't feasible for the private ambulance company. They left, that meant the fire department had to take it. When the fire chief came to the uh, agreement with the County Board of Supervisors, the system was designed to cover those areas. So, so that's what the chief is gonna bring back to you so that it's not that the city of San Jose, yes, you're responsible, but it's a system that is unsustainable. That, that just is not gonna be brought forward. Right. No, I, I understand. I, I was kind of excited when I first heard you talking about the Alliance model during the presentation and thought Alliance, that makes sense, but Alliance to me is agencies across the county doing it together and not one agency doing it. So I, I, I mean, I, I understand what's being contemplated here and those other counties you mentioned at least have some kind of joint JPA type of environment where multiple responsibilities happen. If you do a single, if we did a single, I guess my other thought about this that's weird is you're adding a public agency between a public agency and the contractor. We have the county who's now 
providing, hiring the contractor, this would basically say, well, rather than the county hire them directly, we're going to hire the city to hire the contractor. It's just adding another public agency in between. I just, I'm, I, need, I need to be convinced that that somehow adds value to the system. But I grant you from the presentation, it's clear the system is broken. And, we're, and maybe our, your, your, our thought is that if we run it, we're going to make sure it's not broken. But I think our, our re, we should put our efforts into advocating for uh, better um, contract parameters from the county so that the problems that we're experiencing are, don't continue to happen. So make sure that when they are signing a contract that we've had enough influence on what's needed in that contract to get us the services necessary in our city as opposed to putting a lot of effort into figuring out how we become an intermediary agency between the two. At least those are my thoughts at this point, but I don't know if you have any. Yeah, I'll just add a couple things. Um, one is the, the model that we're describing in the Alliance, and again, I'm not making a recommendation, but it, it does exist in that form, and it does appear to be successful in multiple counties. Contra Costa County, for example, is a fire agency unto itself that provides ambulance services outside of its jurisdiction. Right. That's how they're, they're set up. They happen to be a fire protection district under the county, but as you know, fire protection districts are their own right. yeah, understand, yeah, agency. Right? But I, I guess so, I feel like under the county feels a little different to me, but anyway. I just, yeah, and, and other agencies like uh, San Diego are cities with that arrangement, right? So it, it's okay. not unheard of, but I will say, the, the, the concern I have with the current system in, in terms of experience is that we are operating as two separate systems. When there are no ambulances, I don't hear from rural metro ambulance. I hear a signal from county emergency medical services agency say, dispatch your resources like this, there's no ambulances coming. And so having no ability to reflex resources on, to make the system work better is, is, is very constraining versus the fire services who reflex resources all over the county. If Gilroy's in trouble and they say, San Jose, we could use some help, we send them help, right? If Santa Clara says it, we send them help, right? And, and so we're already in the practice of, of uh, being very operationally integrated without borders when there is need. All right, thank you. It's helpful context and, and good uh, reflections. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, Vice Mayor, come in. Thank you. So what happens is that, you know, as colleagues start to uh, uh, mention different things, other questions come up. So, you know, as uh, Councilmember Cohen uh, was mentioning in terms of, of the role of uh, San Jose Fire Department, you know, when I think of Alliance, I also was thinking of, you know, maybe we're sort of brought together with uh, Santa Clara County Fire, some other fire departments, and, and uh, to me, you know, it would make a little bit more sense in terms of how that gets integrated or cooperation or whatever. I mean, you already have uh, mutual aid that goes back and forth when something is needed, right? So it would seem to me, uh, I, I, I wouldn't imagine that we're the only ones that are experiencing problems uh, unless our contract was written in such a way that, oh, well, you're the only ones that need to respond when you know ambulances are not coming, right? But I mean, what does Gilroy do? I mean, I'm just sort of curious in terms of what, what, what do other entities do? Uh, their services are, you know, I mean, are they, are they not impacted like we are? Um, I'm, I'm hearing uh, directly from the fire chief wait times of up to an hour for ambulances in, in South County. It's, it's part of the reason South County was brought in as a specific stakeholder in, in the meetings that we had with the county. So this is a system-wide challenge. Okay. In, in reality, uh, much like our local network of resources, San Jose generates the highest volume, and so most of the ambulance responses and transports happen at the core because we are the city center, and so uh, other agencies do struggle sometimes when, when the system is very active in the core. So this is, in fact, a, a countywide system. Um, we do have some interested parties from other fire departments here today, I think, very interested in this conversation as well. We've, we've spoken together about the challenges that we're all confronting, and we meet monthly with the, the county EMS director as well to try to solve these problems. 
Thank you very much for that. Uh, but I too believe that you know, if we're thinking sort of alliance kind of type of thing, joint powers, whatever it is, that it would be sort of uh, integrated together. I mean, we already, uh, you know, under mutual aid, help each other. So what are some of the ways in which, you know, it's not sort of the situation that Councilmember Cohen mentioned where it's San Jose having to go all the way down to Gilroy or going north or what have you. I just, I just feel that if there are others in place who are closer, then somehow an arrangement can be made that will, um, that will help the entire county if needed. So that's kind of something I just want to let you know in terms of how that sort of comes together. Uh, because I, I don't see San Jose being the only player to deliver transport. It, Unless you have like a separate enterprise, you know, I, I, just, I just fear that it will, it will take a lot away from what needs to be done here in, in San Jose. I could be wrong, I don't know. You know, I know I, you, you didn't bring details, but it's something that is on my mind, okay? Thank Chief, you. if I could. So to kind of give some examples, uh, I'll use current systems. One of them, the Chief mentioned Contra Costa County. And so when the system was designed, it was to deliver to the entire county. So it takes in those hard to service areas as well as those demand centers, right? And so it's all coordinated through the communication center and, and our posting location and truly, how many units do we need in service, when and where? That's really that critical component. And, and I just want you to, it's not necessarily the fire department that's going to be doing it, it's they're gonna oversee and run it. The communication center is gonna have these units in the correct locations, those types of things. And so when we bring a, a option to you, it's able to address those. Now, Again, in San Bernardino, there are cities that want to assist and robust their service above and beyond what the JPA is doing. They just enter into an agreement with that for coverage, certain levels, peak activity units, those types of things. But as the chief said, it is so dependent on what the county writes in their RFP. And if the county says it has to be one agency, one person contact, that now limits in a confined space and time how you respond to, to that RFP. That's, that's that crux of, we understand what you're saying. If we can get there, we don't know all the questions that are gonna be asked on how we're gonna answer them. That's fair. You know, I think that if, if there was uh, sort of a, an arm of, you know, the fire department or, you know, I mean, because I, I wouldn't want the, um, ha you know, having this countywide transport uh, overwhelm what needs to be done in the fire department, obviously, right? I mean, we still need to go through recruiting and all of that. And so um, as long as it doesn't take away from, you know, what, uh, your main uh, uh, sort of charges, right? Uh, I, I think that's fine. I mean, I'm willing, I, I think it's great to be creative, to think about, you know, this is gonna be an enterprise zone over here that will be like a, you know, that will run the, the ambulance transport, right? I, I think that, that if, it's, if, it's, if that's the option that is chosen, fine. But, you know, in terms of not, not taking away anything from, you know, uh, from, from what you need to do in the fire department, I think that's fine. And, and currently, Sonoma County Fire District set up an enterprise fund because they're going outside their jurisdiction and the, the Con Fire JPA in San Bernardino within that JPA has set up an enterprise fund because they have a communication center to run and all that, right? This is just a, a portion and it's an enterprise fund that's self-sufficient. Thank you. Great, thank you, Vice Mayor. 
All right, well, thank you once again to everyone in the box today. Very thorough presentation, a lot of great questions. I think we've uh, started off this conversation on a, on, a, on a good footing, obviously, much more research and analysis and conversation to be had. We've uh, apparently exhausted the council's questions as we, um, I'm sure that's not actually true, but we're, we're gonna, we're gonna call a timeout for now and then we'll, we'll be back on this item through PISVIS, it sounds like, will likely be the next, the next checkpoint. Um, as we transition to public comment, just want to remind folks we're not doing open forum as is our practice with study sessions. We'll ask folks to comment specifically on the items, uh, the item that was agendized for our study session and will not tolerate disruptions to the meeting today. Let's uh, go to public comment. Andy. Sounds like he's not there. Andy, you can unmute. Okay, moving on to the next person. Eli. Hi there, can you guys all hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Perfect. Um, we're discussing emergency medical services and ambulatory care in the county. I would just like the Council to take a note of the special independent audit done in 2017 about the less affluent area in our county receiving significantly longer than average wait time for ambulances. I mean, Eli, on the lower we're end. not able to hear you. I'm not sure if it's a phone connection or internet connection. Yes, yes. can you guys hear me? We can hear you, but the audio is um, not clear. Oh, give me just half a second here. Let me. Is this better? Yes, that's better. All right, sorry, my mic wasn't plugged in all the way. Um, do you mind if I start over? Um, go ahead. All right, um, I would just like the council to consider the less affluent areas in our county receive a significantly longer than average wait time for ambulatory and emergency medical service care, um, as stated by the special independent audit in 2017. The less affluent areas in the county uh, receive on the lower end about three minutes and 36 seconds on average longer wait time for an ambulance and on the higher end of the outliers about 14 minutes and 88 seconds longer for ambulatory care to get to an area. Just two years ago we had a baby suffer nerve damage and crippling injuries while waiting for an ambulance to make it over to the Shabbat Center where an untrained moil was performing a circumcision and severely damaged. Yeah, stay on topic please. I, just I don't to think that's on topic. My apologies for delivering an allegory of something that I experienced. I was there waiting for the ambulance myself with everyone else in the congregation during the bris. But it's still in less affluent areas of the county. We're receiving less services than in the more affluent areas of the county. And that's something I would like the council to make sure they address before they sign any contracts with private transportation uh, companies and services. Thank you. Okay, next speaker, Phil. Hello, can you hear me? We can hear you. All right. So I'm coming here today because I believe we need to talk about the maintenance costs, uh, the vehicle production costs, uh, among others, because, you know, all these are not free. Uh, these are paid for by the taxpayers. And we could, we could also save tax dollars by, you know, reducing the need for ambulances excuse me, uh, first by fixing our food supply, but also by deporting, you know, the niggers that That's not on topic. I'm sorry. That's not on topic. Let's move on. A caller with the name Samsung. Move on okay. if they're not there. Let's keep going. Okay, back to the council. Okay, thank you again for the staff presentation and my colleagues for all of your thoughtful questions. We're adjourned. <laughs>